All right. Welcome back, everyone. Hopefully everyone had a real nice uh, 10 minute break there. Hope you got some new, some fresh coffee, refilled the water, uh, walked around a little bit, got up out of the chair um, and are ready for the last three presentations today. So um, we'll be going uh, next up with a presentation here on partnering to improve project delivery. We've got three great speakers, Michael Hum, David Romley and Clayton Thompson. We'll let them introduce themselves. Um, as always, if you have questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat. They, uh, they'll be ready to respond to them at the end of the presentation. So take it away. Okay, that's me. Uh, David, can you go to the next slide? I believe it's the agenda. All right, so my name is Dave Romley with Clean Water Services, a special sewer district in Washington County. Uh, I'm going to be primarily talking just the background. I'm going to tee it up for um, Michael and Clayton to take it from there. But uh, the project here, uh, just real quick, Clean Water Services is home to four treatment plants in Washington County. I'm the principal engineer for two of the smaller treatment plants, Forest Grove and Hillsboro. Um, we don't have full-time operation at those two treatment plants. So we really rely upon uh, after hour and on-call staff to uh, come to any emergencies at the plant. So the project we speak of today is at the Hillsboro plant and it's just on the outskirts of the city. Um, it receives gravity flow from the north end of town and the south end, and it all combines the headworks. And on the north end is this pesky, uh, can you go to the next slide, please, David? Sorry about that. Uh, on the north end is this pesky little box uh, that was originally designed at the beginning of the treatment plant um, to collect raw sewage, tank drain pumps, and RAS. And then as the plant developed, uh, it had aeration basin upgrades, uh, that box changed to just a collection box and a tank drain. But what the design cr criteria really doesn't establish is its ability to collect detritus, as you can see here uh, from this lovely picture. So we need to get rid of that material because if it's um, uh, left unattended, it can really overwhelm the screens. Normally the ramen packages are not really a problem uh, to a screening system in any conventional uh, system. So. A uh, two-prong approach here really to fix the solution was to do some due diligence. And we tried to trace it back in the collection system and we identified some of the contributors. Um, it was pretty easy on one of them because of the abundance of ramen packages, but most notably the orange jumpsuits that we found in the collection box. So we established that it was the prison. Um, there were also many restaurants that were producing grease but due to the program being not, not being administered by Clean Water Services, the impact of those violators to the program really wasn't necessarily seen firsthand. And so those grease blankets would build up. So we went back to those folks and tried to have conversations, but those quickly came to dead ends and non-committals to remedy the, the solution. Uh, what we really did establish, if you could go to the next slide, please, was it's the hydraulics. Um, and the, the bullets here are backwards, so I'm going to speak about the hydraulic grade real, real quickly. But um, as you can see with the red line and the green line and the highlights, the, the hydraulic grade is pretty flat here. And so without the ability to convey that material down to the headworks, it accumulates quickly. And again, if left unattended, it overload, overload the screens on, during a big flush event. Like I said, we don't have full-time operations, so this is a big deal. So we need to remove that material. We need to do it physically. Historically, we had done it using VAC trucks and we had disposed of it uh, in, this was a contract VAC truck operation that would dispose of it locally in Portland. That uh, disposal site closed down inevit inevitably and indefinitely, sorry about that. <laughs> and we had to, to switch operations to our own team, but waste management wasn't accepting the material because it needed to be screened and dewatered. So then we looked at screening options, but that became uh, uh, unfruitful event. So we needed a way to convey that material down to the headwork so that it could be properly screened out of the system and it wouldn't overload the headworks and uh, impact plant operations, especially during after hours event. Um, and we needed this done quickly. You can note here that in October was when the uh, VAC truck hauler operations ended and we needed a solution by that next summer. And uh, the way we did this was through some project collaboration and partnering. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Michael's gonna talk about the solution after I, I go through the approach here. Uh, but basically um, what, we were, what we set out to do is we wanted a commitment from an engineer to meet our timeline, which was basically 
to go from a concept level to full biddable documents by May, from January to May. And then we needed a commitment from a contractor to finish that construction starting in June through that big first flush event that everybody sees uh, in the, during the wet season. So kind of clock is ticking at that point. Um, so in short, both of these uh, is, is an approach that we use for high profile projects that um, is mainly used on the construction side, but we did need to adapt it for the engineering side um, so that we deliver a, a sound project and put it into construction and have it be successful for the plant staff. Um, and so this partnering that we use at Clean Water Services, it's, it requires a commitment from the owner and the engineer and the contractor at all levels, from your staff level where you have folks out in the field doing the work and to the mid-level and, and above, uh, like myself, where we're trying to uh, deal with all the paperwork and the, the difficult issues, all the way up to the owner level. So everybody has a stake in the game. So it's designed to build that strong relationship early. And it's to establish agreed upon understanding about the project and its components. And really it's to prepare ourselves for inevitable issues as they arise. We wanna be on top of this as a team and we want all members to be part of that team. I really believe in that. And I was, it was very important to me to make sure that we had team members that had that same focus. So on the, the green document there where it's talking about the, the partnering charter, you know, it does indicate Hillsborough collection box. And, you know, for the PNCWA meeting, we were really going to harness on the, the ramen packages and all of that stuff. But I, I really want to uh, emphasize that beyond that was another part of the project with hydraulic modifications. And so the work at the collection box also entailed some work with some hydraulic mods that encompassed a, a number of uh, full plant bypass pumps that the contractor was gonna be responsible for. So this idea of partnering uh, really meant a lot to us early. And the, um, we, we were all very nervous on how it was gonna go and what was gonna happen with the selection of the Michael's gonna speak about the engineering partnering or design collaboration. And then Clayton's gonna go into the construction partnering. So with that said, I'm gonna pass the camera over to Michael and uh, the next slide is his. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Michael Hum. I'm a project manager out of Kennedy Jenks Portland office. And on this project was the project manager working hand in hand with Dave. So as Dave mentioned, uh, you know, Clean Water Services has a formalized partnering approach that typically is used during construction, but we use many of these same concepts in the design phase. And, and the reason was uh, we really identified that this was a, a unique problem and it was going to take some creative solution making uh, to solve it. You know, this wasn't just a pipeline project or just a pump station. Uh, we were going to need to bring forward creative ideas and have a commitment from the team, both KJ and Clean Water Services, to come together and explore those creative solutions, you know, that were brought to the table. The schedule was also huge. You know, we identified the short schedule. We needed to work quickly, but we also needed to make the decisions close to the work. So we couldn't afford to use a typical engineer does the work, turn in a submittal, owner reviews it, have a review meeting that wasn't, um, that wasn't going to work for this project. <clears throat> and the third thing is we didn't want to lose sight of needing the right people involved. So most importantly on this project, we wanted operation staff input. We wanted to be able to think through those creative ideas and then have operations talk about, you know, well, this is how we would operate it. This is how the material behaves. These are the things we see in the field. It was really this concept of embracing what was important. Uh, you know, and in this case, it was certainly the schedule, but also making sure that the end product or, or end solution was, was going to be usable uh, on the operation side. So a, a little bit of a schematic here of, on the right showing the box. Uh, the far right inlet pipe comes in. Uh, we're in section now, so the outlet pipe is um, down kind of lower center. And you see the blue line representing the normal operating level. That never gets down below the crown of the outlet pipe. So you get this accumulation of material. And then you have this side box here where uh, you had some other drainage piping coming in. So I'll get to the, the next slide with the solution. But really, um, we, we really identified during the scope development that we needed this collaboration piece. And we were going to plan on leveraging workshop meetings to work through those ideas and approaches and, and solutions. 
Um, okay, now onto this side. So really embracing the working workshop, um, the idea that we would be able to bring forward ideas and options that weren't fully solved solutions. So upper right is one of the early sketches that we put together, um, <clears throat> kind of showing, okay, we want, we want to use some sort of scum wet well. We don't want to have a, a full influent pump station. We don't want to pump all the influent flow, but is there a way where we could sluice material off the top into the scum wet well, periodically pump that out uh, using, uh, in this case, a grinder pump to pump the material forward, um, you know, taking those poor hydraulics out of the equation with the, the pump force main. Um, we brought that forward, you know, from an engineer perspective, you're thinking, okay, we're going to automate the gate. We're going to have, um, you know, level control in the wet well. We're going to have automated spray wash system, right? Um, but then through that first, first workshop, getting operation staff input. No, this can't be automated. We need to have our hands on this. We need to open the hatches. We need to see this happening. We're going to be really involved. We want to, you know, crank the gate. We want to um, spray the water. So really having operations staff talk through how they would operate it um, really helped us craft what that end solution would look like. Um, the other picture here is also just an example of kind of this, this workshop mentality, right? Um, it's literally drawing up pump panel operations on the whiteboard. Uh, we ended up having space allocated within the, the control panel and spare terminals to provide the automation um, that we were kind of envisioning originally, if this became something that operation staff was comfortable with. Um, so really having that design collaboration uh, through the design process helped us start to think about, you know, turning this focus to construction and identifying that we'd also need that collaboration on the construction side. So as the design was, was coming together, we also had uh, Dave, Kind of getting some excitement built in the construction community. He was talking to people such as Clayton, other contractor PMs, doing some site visits, kind of soliciting some input, um, but also kind of getting them prepared for this upcoming project. All right, next slide, please. So as we got into construction, we really wanted to circle back to the basics of what was important here, and that was. Um, really this idea that we're gonna add value throughout, including construction. So sometimes as an engineer, we get into a position where we feel like we really have to defend our design and, and really kind of stand by that. But one of the real empowering things with this partnering approach is understanding what's important to the owner, in this case, clean water services. And this mentality that value is added throughout, all the way through construction. So it really empowers us on the, on the design side to really be open to input, right? So be it from operations or the contractor, just empowering us to um, you know, accept that, hey, there might be a better way. And if there is, and if it adds value, then uh, we should embrace that. This partnering also empowers staff to make decisions and making decisions close to the work. So something comes up in the field, you know, if it's a field decision, empowering them to make those decisions in the field. If it needs to get kicked up to myself or Dave, you know, we can provide that input. It fosters this dialogue that I think Clayton will get into here in a minute. But when you have these partnering meetings, more formalized meetings where we bring in, um, you know, vice presidents and director level staff that uh, kind of facilitate discussions at these partnering meetings, it really removes some of that emotion that you might have when you have your boots on the ground. Um, it helps you, you know, see the bigger picture, helps kind of refocus the, the importance or, or what is important. And, and in this case, it was, you know, value, it was schedule, it was operations. Um, so the, the result here was kind of back to the, the solution, the sketch here, it was a grinder pump, uh, a scum system. It was um, uh, crafted to have that automation, but really was an operator, kind of manual operation at first, uh, turning the gate down, dialing in that sluicing velocity and, and flow rate over the weir, uh, you know, operating the, the pump to completely draw down the scum, you know, grinding that material up, moving it forward uh, to the screens. Um, so 
kind of fun to see the end result uh, there in the design drawings and, and how it uh, kind of came to be from the earlier sketches I showed um, really through this partnering idea and, and approach. So that, that's the engineering perspective. I'll turn it over to Clayton. He can talk about the contractor's point of view and this type of partnering. Sounds good. Thanks, Michael. Uh, let's kick on down to the next slide there, David. Contractor's perspective. Um, so uh, contractor gets on site and um, uh, everything starts to go wrong, right? Um, that, that doesn't need to be the case. And that, that wasn't the case on this project here. Uh, let me just pull something up here. Um, from our perspective, you know, there was a lot of collaboration and work, a little background for the job um, beforehand. So the whole design process, understanding what the problem was, implementing a solution. And we were fortunate in this scenario. Yeah, you know, Dave and his team were able to identify the problem clearly and work with Michael to provide a solution that will work in the field. So they were able to come up with the ideas and the concept, put the legwork in, and and put something out that works. Uh, so that was that was a big help, um, outstanding job by them. And now, as a contractor, when you are awarded the job, it's your responsibility to implement that solution to the pesky problem we have. So. Um, the, the nuts and bolts of the project, a little bit of background, um, it was just over half a million dollars in scope and the project was put out, um, and awarded in July and finished completion date was November. So a four month quick up, quick down, uh, from mobilization, getting contracts. Um, in our case, there was 15 subs and suppliers that we had to get on board and get in the in the same scope of these are time frames, these are deliverables, these are non-negotiables. And um, there, there were liquidated damages on the job, but the big thing that, that Dave mentioned was there's rain coming and the contractor's responsible. The whole project team has their mind on it, but as a contractor, I'm thinking we're responsible for delivering this project on time. Otherwise, it's not just that we're gonna disappoint anyone, we're gonna have a gully washer uh, right in our lap. And, and that's no fun. So th this is kind of the perspective uh, we're coming into. Um, the project itself, we're the last ones to the job. It's a design bid build. So all the relationships, all the collaboration, all the positive goings, um, we're, the, we're the latecomers to the job. So as a contractor, um, it's your responsibility to get up to speed and get up to speed quick. And it was such a relief um, after we won the job uh, there was immediate collaboration after notice of award was given. Um, I was able to talk to Dave uh, for the first time since the pre-bid, and he said, hey, this is great. He was excited, ready to go, um, which was very helpful. The attitude and the approach there was remarkably helpful and said, hey, what do you think about partnering? And I said, it's a great idea. I get, I'm reading through the documents. I understand the job. There's risk, right? It gets into the construction side. That's the big thing that I think a lot of folks are concerned with is the risk and and the partnering approach takes that risk, and I think it settles it down quite a bit. Um, so if we can go next slide here. Uh, that touches on just a little bit of what we just said. Um, one thing about this job is that David and Michael and I, we hadn't worked together previous to this. We didn't have the relationship to build on. Um, and kind of an interesting note, it, Sladen and Clean Water Services hadn't done any work together in probably roughly 10 years. And, um, and there was no relationship to springboard from. So we were, at least from a contractor side, we were coming in cold on this thing and with, with a high risk job, high value job uh, to the client and we needed to deliver. And, and there's not really any float in the schedule. When we put together the schedule, uh, there, there's no, well, you know, we can be late here, we can be late here. There really wasn't. Uh, and we were relying on other folks. So the point of collaboration was pretty high for us. Um, and with the approach of partnering, the best thing with it was everyone was on the team and eager to do it. Those were huge. Um, so kind of going into that, um, I'll talk a little bit more about the job scope here in just a second, but wanted to talk into partnering. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, the whole team was there. And, and Dave alluded to this a little bit. Um, you can kind of catch the feel of the tone of the job from Michael as well. Um, 
But what was great about it is the executive level players, the stakeholders above David, Michael, myself, um, they were on board and engaged and they supported the process and let everyone know that was working um, below them on the on the chart that this is something that we're going to do and is important. So because of that, um, a real quick way to say it is we were told to do it. And because we were told to do it, we did it. And because we did it, the communication was outstanding. So starting at the executive level, I think is, is key. And our bosses, just like any good boss would do, they inspect what they expect. So there were check-ins along the way. And that scorecard was up uh, that Dave had on the screen previously that actually had scores to it uh, where we had to be honest with each other on how the team was doing. So um, actually, can we go back to that slide and just look at that real quick as a refresher? It'll be back, oh, maybe about five slides or so. And it'll have two boxes, one on the left, one on the right. Keep going back. It's background design collaboration and partnering. And I think it, it, it'll be valuable for you to see kind of the things that we were scoring. There you go. Uh, on the blue box on the left there, you can see some of the things that we were scoring on. And, and when it came to the score, you know, when, when someone's taking score, you pay attention. Um, and, and if you're honest and you care, uh, you're a little bit worried, you know, and your performance, if we're being honest with each other. So looking down the scorecard, we had to evaluate how the entire team was doing. So th this is a vulnerability point. Uh, because if you're not doing well, it's coming and your boss is going to be in this thing um, the, from my personal perspective. So it, what it does is amongst the team, because you know their score, it matters a little bit more. It, there's the encouragement, the engagement to communicate well, all of these items that are on the scorecard to make timely and responsive decisions as close to the work as possible, to think and act safely. Um, it, each item you can read down through there. Those were important and we got scored and we didn't just get scored and fluff it in and put great numbers. So we all looked well, we were honest with each other. And with that honesty, the, the partnering approach, I think it did two things. Um, we can go back down to the, the slides down below there um, if we could. Um, it did two things. It increased the quality of our communication. You know, in our contracts, there's always definition of communication, how we're going to work, how we get along. You know, we're talking about the construction time frame. And there's always some definition of those things, but it doesn't speak to the quality of the communication. And that's tough to do, you know? Um, and then getting the team members to engage. And I, I think there's a synonym to that that's important and it's called caring, uh, taking ownership. So those two things, communicating well, quality communication, and then caring. Those are the two main things um, that I think helped our project. Let me kick back down to that. Um, with the check-ins. So we had to be honest. We didn't just write down numbers. We had to be honest about it. Uh, and it was read aloud in front of other people how we thought we were really doing. And we were, and we were honest with each other. It wasn't roses and sunshine. If there were areas that we needed to pick up, uh, there was a level of well, being frank with each other and saying, hey, I think we, we were at this level here and here's why, and there'd be explanation and there'd be discussion around that. So we'd talk about it. And what that did is um, one of the other things about partnering is we share our goals. Um, so we measure against our goals. So when we're honest with each other, if we're not doing well, we set together a little plan. We're aware that that's an area we're not doing well and we pick it up because that area matters to us. It matches the goals of the project. So um, when it came to sharing goals, I think that was one of the important parts um, from a contractor's perspective, especially. We don't have the background, we have the documents, we have pre-bid coming in, but once the job starts, you've got to get up to speed on what, what matters, what really matters to the project. And sometimes there's information that you don't have that you got to catch up on. Um, and asking what matters to the team, um, asking questions. Uh, if, if this were to go great, what does that look like? Uh, if, if the worst thing in the world would happen, what does that look like? 
Um, how can I help with that? And you, and you start defining what the goals of the team are just by asking questions and you take ownership of that. Uh, and that was part of the process. And Clean Water Services had a great process there that we followed, um, not tick by tick, but nearly, and it worked out well for the team. Um, so, and, and I know I've kind of gone onto the partnering away from the project a little bit, but I think that's what we want to focus on uh, and really pass on when the session's over. Uh, it's not going to be about the Hillsboro plant as much as what can you do, what can you take from here and learn? Um, lessons learned from us and, and move on. That's how we, I think we could best serve you, um, is the two parts, being having the gold standard for communication and then caring about each other's goals. Um, and what that does is that takes the risk of the project and settles it down. Um, there's, a, there's a settling environment, a settling tone. When you take on partnering uh, and you get in a room and you're sitting there and you're sharing your goals, you, you're starting to be honest. It's a slow process, to be honest, at first. It's a slow process as one person shares someone else and it's usually, it's not fast and it doesn't happen quick, but then at some point, inevitably, someone's vulnerable with the team and share something that, well, maybe normally you wouldn't share. And, and it comes out and what happens there is when everyone's engaged and cares, they take that on. And at that point, they really wanna serve the other well, whether it was Michael or David or someone else on the team. At the table, when we would have these sessions, there was probably upwards of eight people or so. Um, the key players in the project from operations uh, the construction management team with Clean Water Services. Um, folks from KJ were there. Um, I was there. My executive was there, and and so we would we would talk about um, what was important to the job. And there was some vulnerability sharing. We're really concerned about this risk. We're afraid that, that this is going to overflow, and uh, that that the plant's going to overflow, and we're going to have a mess on our hands. Okay, noted. So. Um, sharing our concerns was really helpful. So the myth that vulnerability and trust are harmful, um, I think that needs to be settled. When you partner well, everyone's engaged and you can increase your, your quality of communication and sharing goals. The team takes it on and I think you get better performance out of your team. So um, thank you all for giving us time, giving us your hearing. Uh, and I think we have a few minutes for questions at this point. Do we have any questions, Matt? Uh, we haven't any that have come in from the audience, but uh, we do have a couple of minutes here if, if anyone wants to get any last questions in. I, I had a question for you all. If you were going to do this again, uh, what would you change and why? Uh, at least from my perspective, I'm... I'm a proponent more of partnering than I was as, as a former consultant, you, I'd share the same uh, perspective that Michael does where it, when you enter the hearing room, you, you enter in almost similar to what Clayton was saying, almost with the defense mechanism, you're, you're protecting your design, you're protecting your, your work product. Um, when I came to clean water services, you know, the, the idea of partnering uh, and breaking down those barriers was really emphasized. And I've changed sort of my perspective on it and I've really embraced it. And, and I like to view myself as a team player with all of uh, my professional and non-professional activities, it's, it's team environments and you perform better that way. And so embracing that now and, and what I would do differently, Matt, is um, I'd almost try to uh, integrate into more projects where in the past I would try to limit the number of times I would partnering because it's extra effort to some degree on my end and others. Uh, but I think that extra effort really plays out in the end. And even from that comes great relationships. I think Michael, Clayton, and myself, beyond the professional side, we can joke around with each other. Um, you, you kind of been, been, in the, uh, been through the trenches, so to speak, a little bit. And so uh, there's, a, there's a bond that's created. And, and if we can create that bond throughout the industry, even more so in the marketplace, um, I think general risk and general understanding of projects and how they're done will become more consistent and you'll have better relationships throughout. So um, I would say to, to partner more and, um, and be open and honest, like, like Clayton was saying. 
Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for the presentation. It was great to hear how you partnered on this project. Um, we're going to take a short five minute break here as we transition between the speakers. Um, and we will be back at 1115. Thanks, everyone.